Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Darlington. Welcome back to my studio bass hit recording here in Midtown Manhattan. Today, I'm going to take you step by step through an exciting new plugin called Waves Abbey Road Vinyl. Abbey Road Vinyl is a model of the actual cutting lathe at Abbey Road EMI Studios in London. They were given unprecedented access to the technology and they measured all the different parameters and artifacts that happen when you take a sound and cut it to a lacquer, and then when you take that lacquer and press it in a vinyl printing plant. When people talk about the revered vinyl sound, what are they actually talking about? There's a certain thing that happens in the process of taking a, a sonic wave, whether it's coming off tape or off digital source, to vinyl that does things that people really like when they listen to music. There's a certain glue that happens in the low end, there's a certain silkiness that happens to the high end. It's an electromechanical process that has a lot of elements to it, and it's very, very hard to model. But most of you know that Waves has had an unprecedented access to EMI Abbey Road Studios, and they've modeled some of that really respected gear that the engineers at EMI created to make some of our most iconic records. You're probably familiar with the Red Desk and some of those other um, Waves plugins. So Waves has had access to the vinyl uh, lathe when the mastering engineers actually cut the tape to vinyl to make an acetate that then later goes to the pressing plant to make the vinyl prints. And they modeled the kind of sonic characteristics that this electromechanical process imparts to the music. So this kind of a plug-in could be a real boon to not only mix engineers like me, but mastering engineers, hip-hop artists, pop artists... Anybody who wants to have that certain something that a vinyl record has that a digital file doesn't quite seem to have, and to have control over the various parameters of what that's imparting to your song is unprecedented. So I think this plugin is kind of one of a kind. I don't really know of any other plugins that model the actual lathe cutting process, which is a very difficult artistic process. The engineers who do that, and there still are some, quite a couple of really good ones here in Manhattan, they are very artistic and they have to know a lot about both the musical part of the process and the mechanical part of the process to get a good cut where your song comes back sounding as good or better than it was when you sent it to them. So here in the plugin, we have a module that actually simulates going through the desk, which you can enable or disable. Once it's gone through the desk, it goes to the cutting head and the engineer actually cuts a piece of plastic, a piece of vinyl acetate to the music, and it has to be all done in one complete process from, from start to finish. You can't stop in the middle of a cut. So a mastering engineer has to have all his ducks in a row before he starts the cut. And then this piece of plastic is then plated with metal so that it can be reproduced. And that's called a father, the father board. But you can see that all along the way in this process, there's places where you could lose quality or introduce artifacts. In fact, it's impossible to go through any kind of these circuits and transformations without introducing noise, uh, phase distortion, and, and you know the clicks and pops that we know from vinyl. So would it be great if we could take our music through this sonic transformation of these processes and cut it to vinyl and get that sound and that glue and that silky top end and have control over the artifacts. If you want to put some clicks and pops or some hiss, you can. If you don't want to do it, you can, you can control that. So that's what this plugin enables us to do. The way they modeled it, it's, it's an interesting process. They send a stereo wave to the cutting head and the, the mechanism in the cutting head has to determine how this is going to translate into an, a physical groove. So it's kind of a mid-side uh, approach. So that's how... Uh, Waves engineers uh, took a look at how they're going to model the lathe cutting process. It's a different thing that's happening on the sides than it's happening on the mids. And that's all working in the background. You don't really have to deal with that. But if you understand mid-side or some indifference of stereo, that's, that's how this plugin is operating. It's a very um, specialized way to go about modeling, and that's what makes this plugin particularly unique. So let's take a, look, a quick tour through the plugin. The middle section here is basically your in and out. You have an input level and whether your meters are reading input or output. And I'm using a, a master bus compressor to actually reduce my gain a little bit so that I can hit the plug-in at zero and not go, in, go into the red. You have to be kind of careful in these modeled plugins not to overdrive them. That's, that's the idea. They're actually supposed to be the way analog circuitry uh, works in terms of level. 
Now up here at the top, we have the three, I think of this as three main branches of the tree. Uh, as I was saying before, we have the, the TG desk, which is the, the mastering desk that's transforming the signal to be ready to be cut to vinyl. TG, interestingly enough, uh, EMI, Electronic and Musical Industries, or Electric and Music Industries, uh, has a division called The Gramophone Company. So TG stands for The Gramophone. It, all, it goes all the way back to the 1930s. So a little bit of history there. Now there's two main branches of the tree. The lacquer cut, which is the first iteration where the mastering engineer is, is cutting the acetate. And that's the that's the most pristine sound because you haven't done any more processing to it other than the original cut. Or if, it's, if you send it to a pressing plant and got it back, what would be the change of that? So that's the print button. Is The print is post-pressing and the lacquer is pre-pressing. A lot of times uh, people would get acetates of their song so they could take them to the club and have the DJ play the acetate. And the acetate was always the most powerful and clearest version of the record. Uh, when you're playing back either branch of the tree here, you have two turntable choices. Um, the first one is the turntable on the lathe. What's, it's AR for Abbey Road. That's just playing back with their cartridge on the same turntable that cut the lacquer. Or you could go to the DJ style turntable, which every DJ worth his salt has at some point had their hands on one of those decks. Once you get to the turntable stage, you have three other choices of cartridges, a moving magnet, a moving coil, and the, uh, the DJ cartridge. So if we go to a DJ style turntable, a playback turntable, this is a model of the famous 1200 that everybody's been using for decades. It's a direct drive, so there's not so much wow and flutter. And I have the modeled uh, DJ cartridge here on the computer. Now there are subtle differences between uh, moving magnet and moving coil, mostly in level and impedance and uh, subtle frequencies, but um, that's kind of up to your ear rather than get into the history and, and the specifics of what those two things do. You can just quickly switch back and forth between them and you, you can clearly hear what they're doing differently. So those are the branches of the tree and I think of those as the tone color palettes. You know, the, the, the first iteration, the second iteration, professional mastering level turntable versus the consumer turntable, and then three different types of cartridges. Mostly you want to monitor in stereo, but this switch enables you to hear just your left side, just your right side, and in mono. You always want to check your mixes in mono as a general rule, but the mastering engineer in particular has to be very careful that the vinyl cut is not skewing the mono um, playback, especially if it's going on the AM radio. So between that and the input-output levels, that's your basic sonic palette. Then over here you have what I think of as the retro effects. You have the noise of the um, motor of the turntable. So if I put the plug in on, you can hear that a little bit. That's the rumble. People talk about the rumble of the, the motor of the turntable. And then there's the, the famous crackles. The sound of the um, actual needle running through the groove and then the clicks and artifacts that come from the plastic in the record getting hurt, actually. So I think of those as the retro effects. So the hip hop artists that want to have the sound of their um, song like a needle drop, there it is right there. Then down here at the bottom, we have uh, more artifacts, which I'll show you when we get to the musical examples. Wow and Flutter. You guitar players can think of them as um, M tremolo and, and vibrato, and you synth guys can think of them as frequency modulation and amplitude modulation. Wow is a difference in frequency, like, a, like the back and forth wobble of the motor not spinning exactly correctly. If you've ever had a really old turntable or a belt-driven turntable, for example, where the motor was driving a belt around the platter, you know that those introduce a little bit of frequency modulation, so you have a depth control and a speed control for that. And then you have flutter, which is vo volume modulation, like, like a tremolo. You have rate and um, depth control over the flutter. Uh, the two more things down here on the lower right. So every time you do some kind of process, including equalizing in digital, there's some phase distortion. In other words, the signal that's 
at the end of the process is in some frequency ranges, not quite in phase, as in phase as it was before the process. And finally, we have another kind of distortion which comes from the position of the tone arm. This is a really interesting fact about vinyl. If you cut the same song at the outer band of a record, there's a certain um, additional high frequency content than if you cut the vinyl in the inner band. The inner band has a loss in the 12K, 15K area. As you, as you go into the center of the record, the high frequencies very slowly and almost imperceptibly decrease. So some of the mastering engineers I've known that I've, that I've had chats with actually sit at the desk and increase the high frequency content as they're cutting to the lathe. It's, it's a real art form. But here we can actually automate it and control it. So as you're bouncing your song or your uh, album out of the out through the plugin, you can automate the um, the tone arm to simulate going into the center of the record. And uh, finally, down here, this is a little uh, uh, special effects kind of a trick. The um, the idea of when the when the record is spinning and you just hit it off like that, and you can control the length of the time it takes to slow down in either in bars or in seconds. This is a special effect uh, that simulates the slowing down of the turntable when the DJ hits it off and then turn it back on. So there's an auto resume function which kicks back in uh, right after um, this amount of time goes by. This is the amount of time it would take for that slowdown to happen. And you could, this can be automated and it'll, it'll go into your bounce. So we've got a song here for a little demonstration purposes, and you probably want to listen to this in some really good monitors or some good headphones so that you can really, it's, it's very subtle but very meaningful improvements that you can make in the mix. This is a song by an artist named Jacob Jeffries, a singer-songwriter based out of Miami, Florida, my hometown, so he's got to be good. And this song is called Crazy Under the Moon. It's a pop rock uh, big production with really great studio musicians, and it goes through a lot of dynamic a slow, calm verse, a big chorus, and then a, a big instrumental bridge. So I'll play a little snippet of each of those areas, and we'll, we can see what the plugin's going to do on each of those areas. So this is the quieter, um, introspective first verse. When the sun goes to sleep And crazies roam the street The towers are giant flowers Sprung up all around me. Okay, let's see what that was with the plug in bypass. Let's see what just going to the lacquer sounds like. When the sun goes to sleep and crazies roam the street, the towers of giant flowers sprung up all around me. To my ear, it sounds like the piano and the voice is a little more merged together, is a little more blended. If we put on the TG desk, which is what the mastering engineer would do to make the frequencies uh, correct for the cut. When the sun goes to sleep and crazies roam the street, the towers of giant flowers sprung up all around. So now he stands out a little more like a star because the TG desk is given a little of the um, the analog circuitry vibe to the whole cut, and his voice has a little more sort of gravitas and impact. Uh, next time I play it, I'll take you to the print side as if we're um, coming back from the pressing plant, and I'll scroll through the various cartridges so you'll hear a little bit of a tonal change as we go through those. When the sun goes to sleep And crazies roam the street The towers of giant flowers Sprung up all around me in the tears I can't fight back Trip down to the railroad tracks So you can see that the three different cartridges have really different uh, qualities of tonal characteristics. So the DJ cartridge being the least hi-fi, but the sort of a good kind of gritty thing that happens, and uh, sometimes your, your music might call for that. So um, you can use those cartridges creatively, even switch between them at different points in the song. But... I really could hear that in this, especially that one note piano. Every time I change the setting on here, it was a little different feeling of the piano. So then the record gets really big. Let's go back to lacquer. I like to leave the TG desk on. I think it's, it actually really sounds awesome. Let's go back to lacquer and uh, listen to a chorus without the plug-in first.
So uh, you could see that the right side is a little bit heavier. That's that floor tom-tom banging away there. Now let's hear what that power chorus sounds like with the plug-in. So to my ear, the bass got more solid. I was able to dis differentiate those guitars on the on the sides, and the, and the voice kind of stepped forward. It's like all the good things you want about vinyl. Now you notice I have the retro effects off, which is not the default. So we're not really actually modeling vinyl. We're taking all the good stuff that vinyl can provide. If we really wanted to model vinyl, we'd put all this stuff up to zero. So you actually could hear some of those pops coming through and a subtle noise, a subtle rumble and, um, and crackle. There's another pop. So that's, a, that's optional whether you want to use that stuff or not. Um, let me take you through that chorus again with the uh, various cartridges and I'll, I'll uh, switch back and forth between the lacquer cut and the, and the vinyl cut. And then I'll let it play through the bridge, which is another kind of dreamy section. And I'll, I'll scroll through the settings. You'll be able to see in the picture what I'm doing. And then it goes to a nice instrumental with live strings in a, in a hall and everything, which is a more uh, acoustic, tactile environment, less of a rock environment. And, and you can really hear what the vinyl is going to do to those different things. As each section comes, I'll try to get through each parameter um, during the playback. Let me stop here on the bridge because I want to take time and go and go through the parameters again. The bridge is a really good example of um, the things that happen, particularly um, his voice and the delays on his voice and the cello line that comes in the back. You can really hear a difference when the plug-in is on or off. Let's hear it without the plug-in first. I'm not leaving till I see you smile. Now the, the lacquer cut. I'm not leaving till I see you smile. The vocal. Even if you fake it for a while. See, Let's hear the uh, vinyl cut, and then I'll switch um, turntables in the middle. I'm not leaving till I see you smile. So what it's really doing when you get to the vinyl cut, to the vinyl cut after the lacquer, and there's another process that's happened. The whole thing is really more like unified, like one sonic thing. So that depends what you're going for artistically in your production. If you're going for a big separation and wide um, technicolor thing, that's that's different than if you're going for that in your face kind of hit them where it hurts uh, vinyl sound. When when I went to the DJ turntable everything kind of got a little more punchy and a little a little maybe less extreme frequencies, but more punch, at least to my ear. So uh, one more um, thing, the, the string section on the bridge, let's hear it without. So you can hear there's tubular bells, there's a big string section and two power guitars, a pounding drummer. Let's hear that enhanced 
at the lacquer cut with, with the desk on. To my ear, there was a, an additional shine that came on top of the strings and the cymbals and the uh, and the tubular bells. I associate that string sound with Abbey Road, actually, and um, it's it's very pleasant to my ear. Let's hear that same thing with the um, vinyl cut. So once again, you can hear that the other process is somewhat different, but not necessarily bad. It's just different. It's a little more unified, a little more solid, a little more punchy, maybe not quite as extended in the frequency response and stuff. So you have a lot of choices artistically of what you what you want to do. Let's play that same section and I'll mess around with some of the um, wow and flutter and see if we can hear that. So you can see when I really went hard all the way over to the right side, it was really obvious. So you, that's exactly what you're adding. Then you can dial it back. And if you really want to model vinyl and an accurate model, then the default settings would be what a, a real turntable would probably do to the signal. I can actually hear that frequency subtly shifting around, especially in that, that nice um, major scale that the um, strings were going up. So the other um, artifact part of things is over here, the phase distortion. This is a little harder to hear unless I really crank it up, but I'll play, uh, maybe the bridge is easier to hear this. So um, it's on. I'm not leaving till I see this is the, the sound of the distortion that we're adding to the signal to simulate the process of actually doing the cutting. So if I exaggerated, you can hear the frequency band that we're in and what kind of distortion it is. I'm not leaving till if, we, if we roll up the high pass, um, we'll, it'll go higher. I'm not leaving till I see and then we can roll, roll down the low pass and kind of focus it in a certain so clear, clearly we don't want that, but you could use it as an artifact in a certain section. And what I've done, um, I'll show you in a minute, I have it on the vocal fader. If you want to add a little grit to your vocal, it actually works really good for that. It would probably be good on guitars, anything that you kind of want to have a little more lo-fi to cut through. But that's the kind of distortion that the mechanical process adds to the signal. And the mastering engineer is desperately trying to reduce that as much as possible, but it's it's impossible to get it out completely. And finally, the um, the tone arm thing. Let's see if we can hear that. Um, I'll slowly increase it across the bridge and the instrumental section. If you pay attention to the cymbals and the tubular bells and the strings, you you might hear a subtle um, decrease in the, the really high end, the 12K, 14K. I'm not leaving till I see you smile.
So to my ear, I could really hear that in the bridge. I heard it on the hi-hat. The hi-hat was decreasing and getting a little darker and warmer. And certainly in the strings, the um, the rosiny part of the strings and the, and the tail on the whole reverb was much less when we got t uh, towards the middle of the turntable, the, the, the very far inner band. So that's an interesting artifact that you can use creatively as well. And last but not least, we have um, the stop, uh, tape stop. So let's see, I got it set for two bars. Pretty great sound. If you push the um, auto resume, if you light the auto resume, when we get to the end of that two bar stop, it'll it'll pick back up. You, you're the reason I'm here tonight. You. So that could be really handy, especially to you DJ and EDM producers. You could do some really great artifacts like that. Just bounce it out in the plugin. Um, let's see if I can demonstrate to you the, um, let's put this on without distortion and stuff. If you can hear this phase distortion uh, coming into the voice and giving it a little bit of a cut. You, the reason I'm here tonight. That was very extreme because I have it up all the way, but you, you can hear it sounding like he's going through a de-ether and not speaking very clearly. But you can maybe use a little bit of that to punch it forward. You, you're the reason I'm here tonight. You, you're the reason I stand to... So let me take you back to the first verse with a little pre-roll. Bar five. When the sun goes to sleep. And while that's playing, I'll scroll through the various modes so you can hear the difference. When the sun goes to sleep and crazies roam the street, the towers of giant flowers sprung up all around me. In the tears, I can't fight back. Trip down to the railroad tracks. My mind rages like animals in cages Locked up in a zoo You Night You You're the reason I stand to fight See whether I win you or So if you're a producer who wants to feel like you're product went to vinyl, which is, first of all, you have to find a great vinyl cutting engineer, which is difficult in and of itself. There's not that many left who have that skill. Then you have to go get it plated and pressed, which is also difficult and is a very long wait because of the backlog of vinyl. Then you have to get the vinyl shipped and you have to sell them. But in this case, you could just make your production into a, a finalized vinyl sounding production right here with the plugin with lots of color choices and lots of parameters that you can automate and um, and use for artistic purposes. And I think it sounds great. When the sun goes to sleep And crazies roam the street The towers of giant flowers Sprung up all around me In the tears I can't fight back Trip down to the railroad tracks oh, My mind rages like animals in cages Locked up in a zoo You, you're the reason I'm here tonight You, you're the reason I stand to fight See whether I win you or I lose you I'm just crazy under the moon And I swear I see your face Yeah, I still savor the taste Of your lips on the tips of mine What a waste, what a waste of my time Cause I can never let things go my 